All right, one more song, and then we're going to have another special. Uh, one song in our hymn book now. Together, go to 235. singing.
Amen. Only trust him. We are going to the book of Daniel this morning. Daniel chapter 2. Now, if you recall, we looked at this, uh, the chapter one last week that Daniel and uh, three of his uh, many people were taken captive uh, in Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar overtook the land of Judah and took a lot of people captive. But we see specifically four men, young people, Daniel, uh, Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael, all uh, were taken captive. And the people changed their, changed their names to try to get them to forget their God, uh, the God, the true God of uh, Jerusalem, of Israel. And uh, so he said uh, that Nebuchadnezzar told his, his people, the leader of the eunuchs, to uh, feed them his, his meat and, and his wine. And uh, Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not eat the king's meat. Uh, because he wasn't going to defile himself. And so they were to be eating and being prepared and taught the language and taught the, the teachings of Babylon for three years. Now, I'm telling you this because I'm gonna, we're going to see uh, something as, as we look into this passage. So they were supposed to be trained for three years and learn the language and then come and stand before the king as, as his wise men and astrologers and magicians. So we come to chapter 2, and now we, we're just looking at Nebuchadnezzar, and he has his dream. And we're going to look at this and see not just about his dream, not just about all the, uh, what God did with uh, Daniel. But I want to see today Daniel's and his three friends. And we'll, uh, it's easier to say Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego because it goes on. And that's who they are, Shadrach and um, Hananiah, Mishael is Meshach, and Azariah is uh, um, Abednego. So I'll, I'll use Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They're changed names because that's what the Bible does from here on. Um, so we're going to read verse uh, in verse chapter 2, starting at verse number 1. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, the thing is gone from me. If ye will not make known unto me a dream with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. But if ye show the dream and the interpretation thereof, ye shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation of it. The king answered and said, I know of certainty that ye would gain the time, because ye see the thing is gone from me. But if ye will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. For ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me, till the time be changed. Therefore tell me the dream, and I shall know that ye can show me the interpretation thereof. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, there is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such things at any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. And it is a rare thing that the king requireth, and there is none other that can show it before the king except the gods, whose dwelling is not with flesh. For this cause the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain, and they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. So you see the, the predicament that the wise men and the astrologers were in. That the Nebuchadnezzar said, I dreamed this dream, 
but I need to know the I want to know the interpretation of the dream. But he says he doesn't remember the dream. Now we don't know if he really remembered it, and he's just testing the uh, the magicians and, and astrologers. Uh, we don't know, but he wants them to tell him his dream. That way, he knows if they're able to tell the interpretation. So that's the that's the scenario we have here. But we're going to look and see what happens with Daniel and his uh, three fellows as we go on. Let's have a word of prayer, and we'll continue. Father, we thank you for this passage. We thank you that we can look to it and understand your working, your power, uh, your um, love and concern for your people. And Lord, as we look at this, we saw last week how that uh, you cared for uh, your people. You care for us. And Lord, help us to look to you and have a true confidence in you as we see Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego have uh, knowing that you are uh, a caring God and you have the power to do as the king wanted. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. So the king it tells us that the king's dreams bothered him and he wanted these magicians to tell him uh, what he dreamed. And that's really a good way to prove that they could interpret it's easy to interpret a dream when you hear the dream because nobody can tell you that you're wrong in your interpretation. But if you can't tell the dream without him telling, then how do I know your interpretation is right? So he wanted them to uh, tell the, the dream first of all. It's like I remember being, I, I used to, used to, years ago, deliver pizza for Domino's here in town. And uh, we were we were waiting, and different people were going out and delivering. And and this man, one of the drivers, comes back, and he had just delivered a pizza. And there used to be a psychic on the end of town. I don't know if you remember the place, it was a house that they uh, had a business there, and a psychic that would tell your fortune. Well, he came back from delivering a pizza there, and uh, the psychic, quote unquote psychic, called and said, "You delivered the wrong pizza." And uh, I don't know if the other guys laughed about it, but I laughed about it because if he was a psychic, he would have, he should have called earlier and say, listen, you're putting the wrong, pe wrong stuff on the pizza. Don't deliver that to me because I know it's wrong. But instead, they waited until they got it and then said it was wrong. So that's the same idea here. You can't tell that the psychic knew what he was talking I believe, it, I, I know he didn't know what he was doing. But uh, here, Nebuchadnezzar wants them to tell him the dream. And they said, in verse number 11, it's a rare thing that, uh, that you're doing. So rare that probably nobody has ever done it before. Now, we need to know the dream, then we can give you the interpretation. Well, he says, you're going to have to tell me the dream. And like I said, whether he really remembers the dream or not, he wants them to prove that they can interpret it. It must have been really something, that the dream. We'll look at the dream later on, but not, uh, not tonight, not today. Um, it was something important to him. It bothered him. And even if he remembered that dream, he didn't know what it all meant. And as we, when we do get to that dream, uh, we'll see that it was a very detailed dream and it was a very important dream that he dreamt but he wants them to tell him and otherwise he says they're going to be cut in pieces if you will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof ye shall be cut in pieces but if you tell me the dream I will bestow much uh, honor on you verse number 6 if you show the dream and the interpretation, ye shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. He says, if you don't tell me, there's one decree for you. Verse number nine, if you will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. And we know what that is, death. Cut in pieces, the houses made a dunghill. Verse number 12 and 13, uh, he said that he commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon and then in verse 13 the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain and they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain now if you're thinking uh, considering all of this 
where in the world was Daniel? If the, if the king called for the, the soothsayers and the astrologers and the wise men of the land, why weren't Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego called? Well, the thing is, let's look at something here. We go back to, to chapter 1 and... Uh, Look at uh, verse number 5 of chapter 1. The king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Three years, right? Now look at the beginning of chapter 2. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar. That's pretty, pretty early in Nebuchadnezzar's reign. When you look at history, and, and I've looked it up and tried to find out uh, when Nebuchadnezzar took over Jerusalem, it was actually in the first year of his reign that he took over Jerusalem and brought these men into Babylon. So in his first year, and now it's in his second year, so we know that Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego haven't been trained for three years, have they? So anything that he does, Daniel and, and his three um, companions do, anything they do, is not because of the training of Babylon. They're not full wise men yet. They haven't stood before the king. I know in, in chapter 1 it says um, at the end of the days, in verse number 18, uh, that the king had said he should bring them in. Then the prince and the eunuchs brought them in. They were found ten times better than all, everybody else. So there was a time later on that they stood before the king and he, he knew that they were ten times better. But here they are being trained, and they're coming to kill them because Nebuchadnezzar doesn't want any of the training of those, any wise men or astrologers. Because who's training them? The wise men and astrologers. He doesn't want them, anybody, to be like them because if they get rid of them, start all over again, now he has new wise men. And that's what he's saying. What he's trying to do is kill even the ones who are going to be the wise men to stand before the king. Now, what I want to look at is from there on and what Daniel does and what, what Daniel's heart was. And it's, and it's focused mainly on Daniel, but we've got to keep in mind that Daniel and the three others all stood before the king and they were all eating the, the vegetables and the, the drinking water rather than the king's meat that was uh, probably offered to uh, false gods. So keep in mind what Daniel was like. And I want to see Daniel's confidence in God. Because when we look at him, when we look at Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we understand that they had full, absolute trust in God. And in their cases, they were in danger. We, don't, we live our lives not in danger. But sometimes we don't trust God like we should. Oh, oh I, 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 what am I going to eat tomorrow? Are you worried about what you're going to eat tomorrow? You're not trusting God for it? I know it's not probably on our minds, but uh, it's not like we're going to get our heads cut off or thrown into a lion's den or thrown into a, a burning, fiery furnace. We have it, I'll say, easy today. We look around and we don't like what's going on in the country. We don't like this. We don't like that. But it's nothing like their danger. They had a true confidence in God. Now let's look at this. Verse number 14, Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to Arioch, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Arioch made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. That's pretty bold, isn't it? But I'll give you the interpretation. Now, he knew that it was God who was going to give the interpretation, and he tells the king that later on. But Daniel didn't know the, the king's dream. Daniel didn't know um, anything about it except, I know my God can do it. I know God can give me the answer. 
And so he told the king, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to give you the interpretation. Just give me a little bit of time. Look at verse 17 and 18. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. So he, what he tells them, he says, let's pray about it, boys. Let's talk to God and get uh, and and seek His mercy on us because in this case it is mercy. We need God's mercy because they were going to be destroyed, and mercy is God's love to rescue us from danger, rescue us from uh, trouble. So Daniel tells uh, the, the, his his friends, "Let's talk to God about it." Let, let me show you verse number 36. What, da what Daniel says to the king, this is the dream. And, and he, 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 we, in, the, in the passage just before it, he, he gives the, the, the details of the dream. But he says, this is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Who's we? It's Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel's not saying... I'll give you the dream. Now, I think I, I believe. Now, this doesn't. There's nothing. It's nothing to back this up except for Daniel's love for God. I believe Daniel is saying we, and is including God in the whole group. It's not just the four of them, but there's five of them: Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and God, because God is the one he's depending on. So he he tells Ariok back in verse number eighteen tells. Uh, the three boys, three men, to seek God's help. Now, we don't have Daniel's prayer. We don't have what he asked for. We just know that he's asking God for the dream and the interpretation. And he tells Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, to pray to God for that. So we don't have a record, record of the prayer. We do have a record of Daniel's prayer of... Uh, praise to God for the answer. Now look what he says, because in his, in his praise of God, he's praising God for, number one, the dream that God revealed. Well, let's look at verse 19 first. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Okay, now, now Daniel's blessing God, Daniel's praising God. Number one, he praises him for the dream being revealed. And then he praises him for the interpretation to be revealed. Those are the two things he's praising God for. Now, think about it. Did he go to the king and say, I mean, you can, you can think he, he gets this vision in his, in his mind when he's at night, and his, whether it's a dream or just a vision, like he said, uh, he knows the dream. Well, in the morning, let's go tell the king, is this your dream? He doesn't wait to find out if that was the dream. He knows it was Nebuchadnezzar's dream. How? He knows his God. He knows God answers prayer. He has a full confidence in God that God is going to help him and the other ones at the same time. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Look what he says. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever for wisdom and might are his. Now Daniel's not going to take any credit for being able to interpret this dream. The Bible tells us that God gave him the ability to uh, interpret dreams. And uh, but but Daniel knows that it's all from God. Wisdom and might are his, and he, God, changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. 
I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. He fully trusts God. If he didn't, how would he know if he stood before the king and he gave him some fake dream and tried to interpret it? That's what probably one of the wise men of, of uh, Babylon would have done. I'll come and, well, I'll just try it to see if I can get away with it. Telling him his, his dream. If he forgot his dream, then maybe what I say will make him think it's right. Now, Daniel, no, knew that God gave him the answer. It was the same as we saw a few weeks ago about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego as they told the king, Nebuchadnezzar, same king, uh, we're not going to bow down to your statue. We are going to do as God wants because our God, he sa they say, are, is able to to deliver and he will deliver us out of your hand they knew it they didn't know if they were going to die or not but they knew God would take care of them they're full we, we say trust and it's a, it's a full assurance in the confidence of God God looks at you and me and he says I want to take care of you I love you, so I want you to rest in that love. I don't want you to worry or fret. I don't want you to be afraid. I don't want you to, to think that you can handle things yourselves. I want you to trust me. Have confidence in me. So all four of these men, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, all knew that God was with them. There's nothing here that tells us that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego saw uh, or heard the dream or understood that God revealed the dream to them. They were praying for it. Sometimes we pray for something and we don't get the answer. We have to wait. Someday the answer is going to come. But we need to know that God is for us and God will answer in his time. Remember what Jesus said, Whatsoever ye ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Daniel believed God was going to give him the answer. And probably didn't know it was going to be that night. It might have been a few days later. We don't know. Or maybe it says, it says in a night vision, but it doesn't say it was that particular night. At some point, God gave the answer, and Daniel knew it. Look over at, uh, I'll look at uh, verse 17. They, they specifically got together and prayed for a specific thing that they would desire, verse 18, mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret. They didn't fall down and cry, and they didn't worry. They didn't... Uh, uh, cut themselves like Elijah and, the, and the, or not Elijah didn't but the prophets of Baal remember what they did they were cutting cutting themselves jumping up and down on their sacrifice as Elijah said um, we're going to have a, this contest basically you pray to Baal I'll pray to God and we'll see which one sends the fire to burn up the sacrifice they jumped around all day trying to get Baal to do what they wanted and Elijah says this, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Two sentences in his prayer. And that's all he all he prayed. He didn't have to get up and fall down and cry and worry and and uh, uh, sit around moping and wondering what's going to happen. 
He knew that God was going to answer, and he just simply asked. There was no doubt in his mind that God was going to answer. It was full confidence in God. Now, if you, I'm going to read this again. This is the last part of it, Elijah's prayer. See, he's praying. He, before he got up to, to uh, offer these sacrifices, he asked the people, he said to the people, how long halt ye between two... Uh, I forget the last word. How, how long are you going to be uh, stuck in this limbo land, not following God and, and trying to follow Baal and not trying to follow God at the same time? It's not going to work. He said, but in, in, this, in this prayer, as he's praying, he says this about the people to God. Thou hast turned their heart back again. See, they didn't even know it. They were going, they were, they were turning back to the Lord, and, and here Elijah says their hearts are already turned back. But they're watching to see what God's going to do. Elijah had the confidence. Elijah knew what God was going to do. And he just waited. The people didn't know. But their hearts were back towards God because they already knew that Baal didn't do it. Baal did nothing. So turning to the Lord. Elijah had confidence, and Daniel had confidence. When they turned to God, God answered. Daniel thanked God for revealing the dream, for revealing the interpretation. He knew he had the answers for the king, and he didn't wait to go to the king to find out. He knew it was there, and that's why this prayer of Daniel's, is this prayer of thanksgiving, giving God all the praise. Now look what he says. Let's just look at some things here on this <clears throat> understanding that in his prayer, I see, God, I see Daniel's love for God. Now we already know that Daniel loved God when it says over there and back in uh, uh, chapter 1, it says, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat. Uh, he, he wouldn't defile himself. He knew what God wanted. He knew what, what God had said in the law, and he was going to follow God's law because of his love for God. And so as he prays this prayer of thanksgiving, as I said, we see his love. And he says, blessed be, verse 20, back in chapter 2, blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he gives it to whoever he desires. Wisdom and might he says, blessed be the name. Blessed be the character of God. God is already honorable. Nobody has to honor him for him to be honorable. Nobody has to praise him for him to be glorious. But we should look at him that way. Knowing that he loves us and cares for us. So we love him back. John said it in 1 John, we love him because he first loved us. How many people would love God if, if God was a mean God? If God was a hateful God? No, God loved us and gave himself for us. And that's why we are to love him. Verse number 21, talking about God, and he changeth the times and the seasons. God's the one who controls the weather. So people have tried to control the weather, but God's the one who does it. He controls weather. He controls time. He can stop time. He can back up time. We see that in the Bible where uh, Joshua said, Sun, stand out still. And God stopped everything. The sun stood in its place and uh, for a whole day. And later on in the, in the history of uh, uh, Israel, Hezekiah wanted a sign from God. And God said, well, what sign? Do you want the shadow to go forward or the shadow to go backward? Well, he says it's easy for the shadow to go forward. That's a normal thing. So he said, send it back 10 degrees. So the shadow went back. So the sun backed up in the sky. Now, God can change time. God can stop, and he will stop time. He says, he changeth the times and the seasons. Then he says, he removeth kings and setteth up kings. God is in control total control and if what he does he's going to do what he wants to do he will do he says 
he giveth wisdom unto the wise. Well, if he gave wisdom to the fools, what would they be? Wise. So he's given wisdom to the wise. The, the, the wise, people who are already wise don't need wisdom. He's already given it to him. So he gives wisdom to whom he will. He wants us all to have wisdom. The wise are the ones who trust Christ as their Savior. He gives wisdom to the wise. Wisdom doesn't come from our own abilities. God doesn't need to give wisdom to those who are already wise. The understanding, he says, he gives knowledge to them that know understanding. And those people who have the ability and they want the help of God, he gives them the knowledge that they need. He gives us the knowledge. He's, he, and all these things are good things. There's not, he's not talking about anything that's bad. This is what God does for us. He revealeth, it says, the deep and secret things. He knows what's in the dark. And he protects us in the dark. We don't know what's in the dark. We walk in, a, uh, <laughs> Jerry and I were walking, in the, walking down the street. It was this morning, 6 o'clock this morning. And it's surprising how few street lights there are in some streets. And we were in the dark. And it's kind of eerie. But God knows who, what's in the dark. God's, God's light and he knows what's in the dark he's in, so Daniel's just saying look at, look at my God look at, at who he is he reveals these unknown things to people when, he, when they need it he knows what's in the darkness because light dwells with him and now look at verse 23 he says I thank thee now here comes what we might not see as thanksgiving in the first few verses but in verse 23 he says I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might. And that's just, that's, yeah, that's not, not talking about just that dream that was revealed to him. That's just, he has already has wisdom and might. He had wisdom enough to say, I, I'm not going to defile myself for the king's meat. He had wisdom enough and, and strength enough to say, I don't want to do anything that's going to displease God. And I'm going to stand up for him because I have full confidence and trust in God. He says, you have given me wisdom and might. And now he says, and has made me and made known unto me now what we desired of thee. And that is what the king's matter was. What the king wanted to know, you gave to me. You gave it to us so that we can stand before the king and tell him, uh, what he wanted to know and who's going to get the glory God it's not going to be Daniel he says he, he, later on he says I it's not about me it's the God in heaven who gives us this ability our God God the Jehovah is love John says he loves us he cares for us our confidence our trust needs to be in our God. Psalm 118, verse 8 says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. I think we all know that. Don't put confidence in man. Don't be trusting man because man will fail. Men will fail. The governor fails. The president fails. The senators and representatives fail. Even policemen fail. We need to f trust God in everything because he's the one, only one we can trust in. He never changes. He is God, and we need to have our trust and our confidence totally in him, like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the account here of this dream that the king had we don't know what the dream was yet. We haven't read it, haven't looked at it yet. But Lord, you revealed it to Daniel. And you gave him the ability to have the wisdom to know how to stand before the king. You gave him the ability to have confidence in you. And Lord, I pray that you would help us. No matter what comes in our lives, there's nothing that's not danger like for Daniel and his friends. But Lord, help us to have a full confidence in you in all the little things. 
and the big things that we consider big. Lord, help us not to turn and worry and try to do things on our own. Help us to have full confidence in the God of heaven. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.